morning, everyone. This is Rosie, and this is Nona Stitching Lounge, a podcast about uh, two hobbies. One is, or three hobbies. One is knitting, one is crochet, and one is just collecting yarn. So it has been a minute since I have been on. Um, I think it has been June, July, August, September, October, November six months exactly. I think my last podcast was May 31st and a whole summer went by and fall almost and here I am. So how is everybody? I am great. Um, I just retired as of today is my first day of retirement. I've been off for a couple of weeks on vacation but otherwise um, I hope that this means that I'll be able to broadcast a lot more frequently because um, it's been a little bit difficult with full-time work, the summer, traveling, and then trying to put in a broadcast. The good thing, however, is that I have been knitting. So um, I do have quite a few things to show you, um, quite a few acquisitions, but I might do a separate video on that because otherwise this will get very, very long. And um, I've been uh, knitting quite a bit all through the summer. I'm wearing, uh, so yes, what am I wearing? Let's start with that. So I am wearing the Cumulus Tee by Petite Knits, I do believe. And I made it out of Holst Garn uh, in a gray and a blue. So the gray is um, Coast which is uh, wool and um, wool and cotton. And then the blue is tides, which is wool and linen. And I absolutely love this pattern. Um, the uh, colors, let's see, I used, I think it's called denim or river. I'm not sure you can see this here. It's not coming out there very well. Oh, there we go. That's a good color. Um, I've made quite a few things out of that. So, um, yeah, so I used that for the striping and then I used, hmm, let's see, what did I, what did I, oh, there we go. I still have a cone that I haven't wound up completely. The cone, again, is Coast and it is the color Putty. So that's the color Putty. It looks white there, but it's actually a very light gray. So I absolutely love this pattern. This, I did change this pattern a little bit um, in that, uh, in this particular thing, I, I actually knit the border um, with the, or sorry, with the neck. So I didn't have to go back and do an eye cord. I just did a simple cast off here. And then I did, I think just a couple, a one couple of uh, um, rounds, and then I just cast off. So I did a little bit differently, but it is just one of my favorite makes. I, you will see that I have done this another two times. So <laughs> I know. So um, on that note, I might as well tell you the next one I did, I did in this color ink. I'm not gonna put it on because um, it fits pretty much the same as this one. It kind of, you can't see too much. So now this is one, um, one uh, strand of uh, Holst Garn. This is the Super Soft. And this one I did not do, I did a I-cord bind off on the, uh, on the neck, as well as the sleeves, and as well as the bottom. Now I, this one, um, I think I, I should have made it just a little tiny bit longer, but anyway, it comes to about the same as this one. Um, this is called ink. I know it looks black, but it's supposed to be a very dark, dark navy, but it it it, it for essentially is black. So I I cast this one on in July um, when we were driving down to our friends in New Jersey and uh, just. And I just wanted something in the car for something that would be something I had already done because I did I had cast this on I think in May the last time I um, 
broadcast, but I had not obviously finished it. So, um, and then I finished it and I thought, okay, we're driving down. I just wanted to do something um, simple, something I already knew how to do, right? And so, and I knew that, I think I used 3.75 millimeter uh, um, needles in the round and um, yeah, and I used one strand and you'll see that, I mean, it's, it's, it's not see-through. Like when you put it on, you can, you can't really see through it. So it's really bloomed. I really love that. And this is one strand too, the same 3.75 milliliters, milliliters, millimeters, um, hook, hook. Oh my God. I haven't broadcast in a while. <laughs> needles, needles. That's it, people. Needles. So, um, yeah, so this was finished in July. This one was finished in June. Um, and what else? I think I showed you the my ranunculus that I that I did. I'll probably show it to you again. Okay. So the other thing that I cast on is this is the Dingley Dell by Isabel Kramer. Um, it's a little bit diff different than the this one in that it has these, um, in, it looks like it has inset sleeves. I don't know if you can see that here. Um, it really, it really is a lovely pattern. It's very simple as well. Um, and I just, I, you can see it here the way it, if she has my hat on, um, and then it looks like the sleeve is inset. Um, so I followed this pattern pretty much to a T. This is Vidalana sock yarn that I had from uh, my knit crate, and I had bought these two colors together, and I thought that looks really cool. I wear it a lot. It feels great. Um, yeah, so I followed, I love that it has this kind of uh, border and then you pick up the stitches to do the uh, ribbing. Um, the same for down here. It's, uh, it's a really nice pattern. Now I've, I made this cause I was gonna enter it um, in Jonna and Kim's uh, Isabel Kramer, um, I guess knit along and I finished it and everything and then didn't take pictures and didn't post it. But anyway, it doesn't matter. That's not why I did it because I wanted to try it um, because I was totally into these kind of tees and I thought, let's do a different, um, just a different pattern than this, right? But, um, and, and this is a, I believe a uh, Merino wool. Um, I do have the band and I will put it down here, basically on what yarn I use, so you can take a look. Um, I really don't remember what size needles. I think they were a four, one strand of the Vidalana. Might have been the 3.75, I can't remember. But it, uh, again, really nice make. I wore that a lot this summer. So uh, what else have I done? This, I did another ranunculus. It's a little more cropped. Um, it is done, it's pretty true to color. It's like a, li it's a linen cotton that I bought from La Mia, uh, Hobium Yarns. I bought it a while ago and I had quite a bit of it. And um, there's the color basically. And, and I just, I don't know, I had it, I thought, oh, let's just put together, a, let's do a ranunculus. This is my third, I think, ranunculus. I made it, I know we shouldn't show our mistakes. This is the back, but I did make a mistake there. And you can tell that it, it, because it is cotton and linen, it doesn't really, even though you block it, it doesn't really forgive it, but it's the back. So I'm not gonna worry about it, but that fits really nice too. Um, won't be my last ranunculus. Again, I think it's 50-50 cotton linen um, from La Mia. And uh, yeah. Um, I think I followed it pretty much true to pattern and I've worn this quite a bit too for the summer because um, it's just a nice light wear with the linen cotton. Although I don't like that it doesn't block really well, but 
anyway, I did do the um, twisted rib um, at the top. I used I used the wide neck pattern because I like I don't like my sweaters to be really high up, and so um, I did the wide neck pattern. I did I believe the twisted rib there. Yep, and also I did it down here. Again, I might have made I could have made it just a little bit longer, but. Um, you know, with shorts or a little jean skirt, it's actually really the right length. So that is sweater number four. <laughs> I know it's been, it's been something. So what else have I been knitting? Um, so I pretty much started doing, um, some Christmas knitting in probably end of September, October. Um, I have uh, four daughter-in-laws, or sorry, three daughter-in-laws and a stepdaughter. And I thought for Christmas, I would make them the Paris Toujours by, I think it's Elizabeth Kramer as well. Um, it is a shawl and I may, I've now finished four of them. So this is the first one that I made. I don't know if you can tell, but it is actually not completely gray. It's more on the movie side. You can see. Yeah, there it kind of shows the move a little bit better. This yarn was purchased for me by one of my son's fiance. So she's not quite a daughter-in-law, but um, when she went to Peru in the spring, and it is, I'm presuming I'll pack up because it is so soft. It is, I think, probably a sport weight. I don't think it's quite a, a fingering weight. So I thought I'm going to use her yarn and make her a shawl for Christmas. So here it, oh, what did I do with this? Oh, there we go. Here it is. This is what it kind of looks like. I think it is beautiful. I know she likes to wear these. Um, over her coat. So I think that will be really nice for her and she loves these colors. So yeah, that's pretty much the color. So it's not a really a gray, it has like a movie tinge to it. So um, yeah, so I did change it a bit. The um, Paris Toujours does call for a bigger, is it here? Yeah, a bigger, a longer border here on this side. Um, but I thought it already had gotten quite long. It also kind of tells you, like I just did five rows of this, a couple of rows of the garter, five rows of the lace, and but it does, I, th or I think, yeah, no, three, five, three. And it does tell you to kind of alternate, like the garter do six, and then the lace do 10, and then you change it up, I don't know, over a pattern. But I, I, I just want to keep it simple. So I just did, um, a regular pattern on both and kept tab of it. So that is my first Paris Toujours. Oh, you can also, by the way, wear it as a, it's quite long if she wants to wear it like a shawl, you can do that too, um, which is kind of nice too. It's kind of really comfy cozy. Um, and it's big enough that you can actually wear like a little, you know, blankie. So it's really quite versatile. And I saw this, this was inspired um, by um, Kevin and Ray of Needles at the Ready. He had made one in blue and I thought, oh, I'm gonna buy that pattern. And here I had it. So I thought this is great. Um, it's, it's such a great pattern. It's so easy to do. And uh, um, this has not been blocked yet and see how the wonderful drape it already has. It's so amazing. So that was number one, Paris Toujours. And then I made a number two, Paris Toujours. <laughs> so this one is done in a Vivalana from Knit Crate with a gray stripe. I actually used this. I had leftover on um, this color here and I thought, oh, that would be great to use. And then I didn't have enough to kind of finish this border here. Oh, do it this way. 
So I thought I'd put a little gray stripe kind of, the yarn is kind of denim-y anyway, and it kind of has this uh, kind of this heathered look. So I thought the gray would look great. And I put this bigger stripe in and then a lighter stripe. And again, it is very soft. This has not been blocked yet. Um, again, a really nice make. It's not quite as big as the other one. Um, as yeah, but it's still, I think, a really nice uh, size. So I should probably put no, the screw up so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So that's toujours, Paris Toujours 2. <coughs> Um, again, I did uh, the modifications I made was that I just um, I did an even number of garter and lace work and just kept track of it that way. I don't, I'm not sure. I guess she just does it for change. I'm not sure why she says, you know, like six garter and then um, some lace, I don't know, 10 lace and then eight garter and then I don't know. It, it's kind of interesting, but just gets confusing to try to track all that. So anyway, so that is my second party toujours. <coughs> so then I thought I'd use a little bit different color. So this, my friends, is a holst garn, super soft, held with, um, some uh, mohair it's it actually it's a little bit pinchy it's not obviously it's not as soft as the other ones but it actually turned out beautiful i think um again came out well this one i have blocked because i wanted to see how it softens but um i think it turned out really beautiful the colors turn out nice so what i used for this one is so I used this color, which you can see is a little more on the fuchsia side, and it is called, um, hmm, what do we call it? Ugh, if I can find it, aubergine. So this is the aubergine and super soft. And what I used with it, it is one of my acquisitions from uh, Knit Picks, I think, or Love Crumps. So I paired it with this color. And together, it actually, it just made it look a little less purpley and more burgundy. So it, came, it I think it turned out really nice. And it's not too bad. I mean, this isn't complete mohair. This um, is... I believe I have the paper in here. Mm -hmm. I had bought five of them. I used four. And do you think I can find it? Okay. And I also bought four in the blue. I just wanted to try different mohairs because I don't normally pair um, mohair with my work. So this is called Concept. It's called 50 uh, Mohair Shades. You can get it from Knit Picks, and um, it has 218 yards, and it is, hmm, I think I can read that? No. 67% mohair and 30% polyamide. Um, I don't know what 60, that's, I don't, I'm not sure what the other three is doesn't say if it does I can't oh wool so it had yeah so it's it's um I think it's a pretty reasonable price for this um and like I said I used four of the burgundies how many do I have left I have two of them and then I bought this blue I, I was gonna I was gonna try to um, use it with the um, denim that I showed you earlier. Um, I was gonna, I'm gonna maybe do something and pair these together. 
This is a Tides. It's the coast, uh, the Tides from Holst Garn, and it. Um, I think that will look really nice. It'll it'll deepen this a little bit and give it a little bit of a fuzz. So that's what I did, and one of my acquisitions. So, um, and it is hot in here. So I shall actually, what I'll do, put that there, just to show you what this looks like. I shall put it on Paris, aptly named. Oh, I put it wrong. Anyway, that's Paris wearing the Paris Toujours. And then for the fourth one that I just finished, I used it with Frankie Gray fibers that I bought in, I think, the, her August sale. Um, so I watch The Grocery Girls with Jody and Tracy and uh, Trace Jody. And her daughter Jordan we're having a sale might as well show you um, some of the yarn I bought from the Frankie Gray Fibers so I got these three these two these three which are really beautiful sock yarn is it DK or sock let's see uh, this one is Let's Go Barbie, and it is fingering 80-20. So 80% superwash with a 20 nylon. This one is called Rest in Show, Best in Show. Best in Show, so you can see there's a theme there. And then I had bought some sock yarn as well, which I thought would all go really nice. Again, fingering weight, but this uh, is a yeah, 80-20 as well. And this one is called, um, let's see, it doesn't give me a name. Why won't it give me a name? Hmm. Oh, High maintenance. Yeah, that makes sense. High maintenance. I love Jody's yarns. They just have some amazing <laughs> colors and names. And um, so I bought three. There, I think I bought four packs of three. I'll show you what I've already used. So I bought this one and then I bought these ones. As you can see, one's called, this one's March madness this one's wanda and this one is oh high maintenance oh that's good i didn't realize i have two the same well that makes that's good i can do something with those great um so those were the fingering and then i had anyway so yes yeah, so some of my purchases so what did i do with it i used three two and a half, I guess, to make another Paris Toujours, Paris Toujours. And I'll show you, I started with this gray, heathered gray, which moved into this other gray with pink speckles. Then I moved into this one, and then this darker pink to finish it off. So, um, a little bit different than the others, but I thought, oh, this turned out really beautiful. Again, it's a super wash. It's a fingering. And this is what it looks like on. It really gives a beautiful effect. I wasn't quite sure when I added this last one, which was really deep, but I think once you put it on like this, it really kind of it gives a really, I mean, it's so soft. So now I got to decide which daughter-in-law and stepdaughter do I give each of these two? <laughs> um, so it's, I know the blue, I think the blue will go to one with blue eyes. I think that'll look great. This one, 
guess the debate I'll give and you know the other one to the girl to the one that brought me back the yarn from Peru so it's just between this one and this one and who do I give either to my stepdaughter or my other daughter-in-law so that's some of my Christmas knitting already done and um I think this turned out so beautiful I, I don't work with a lot of gradients and a lot of, um, um, actually, I think this was DK, if I'm not mistaken. I think I had three or four DKs. And yeah. These are all fingering, so <coughs> I think these are DK. Yep, these are DK. So I used, excuse me, I used three DKs and these were the other DKs that I had that I was thinking of potentially mixing, but um, they, uh, they didn't go. Anyway, I'm going to, uh, hold on. Sorry, Nona likes to talk loud. Yeah, so I had five of the DKs, so I used three here, there are two left of the DKs. Um, and I think I paired the gradient. I don't know. What do you guys think? I think I did a good job in putting the fade <coughs> through. So that is, <coughs> oh my goodness. <coughs> I think I had some mohair. Um, a lot of my knits. <coughs> so what else have I been doing besides buying yarn? <laughs> Um, I have, and obviously knitting lots of shawls and sweaters, I have a couple of works in progress that I started in the summer and then I kind of put on hold, um, for various reasons. I, I think I'm going to have Nono come in a little while and we can, uh, we'll chat about what we did this summer. Um, so if you want to stay tuned for that, it'll be at the end. But another uh, work in progress is, guess what? Another cumulus tea. <laughs> yes, another cumulus tea. So it's still in progress. I am in, um, what's it called? What am I doing? Yeah. So there we go. You can see the color, it's pretty true to color. It, this is called Chaco. It is a Tides, which is wool and uh, silk. Um, again, I'm using 3.75. I'm using bamboo needles. And one of the reason I'm using bamboo needles, you can't see, is because I'm going away and I plan to bring this on the plane and I don't want them to confiscate my Chalgu stainless. So um, I bought some bamboo needles, although they're very precarious. I've already broken two. Um, so anyway, so this has been on uh, Body Island for a while. I find that even in this one that I made, it, it, it I might actually take in a few I made um, fake, a, f a fake kind of, I think that, I, I don't think that's in the pattern. I put two purl stitches there just to make it look like go down the side, one there and one on the other side. So I did change that. This I will do the I-cord bind off. You can see that I have not done any uh, anything like this on this one. Again, it's one of my very, um, tranquil knits. I just like that I know the pattern and I really enjoy it. And I have so much of this coast, of this host garn to use. And even though I've wound up so much of this, I still have this much of it. So I figured why not? Um, yeah. So again, this is one strand of Holst Garn Tides with 3.75 milliliter, oh, sorry, 
3.25 milliliters, um, 3.25, which means I probably use 3.25 in the black as well and in this. So 3.25 <clears throat> millimeter needle, needles. I cast on, well, I won't tell you because it's a paid pattern. Anyway, so I have a couple rolled to take with me on my next trip, which we'll talk about later. And so, yeah, I've got, I want to make this one a little bit longer. So I've got uh, quite a bit to go. That'll be a couple of plane rides, right? Yeah, still got about another double of that. So anyway, again, this is just a, a raglan um, sleeve, but and you increase to the V. Now, a lot of some people are complaining that the V was even in this one that the V was a little too deep. But personally, I like it. Um, I know not everybody likes to show their bosom. I'm not quite showing my bosom, but you know what I mean. So, so that's been a work in progress for a while, and it's gone around the world, <laughs> literally. <clears throat> and I still haven't finished it. So, but I was again starting on my um, <coughs> Christmas net. The other work in progress that I've had for a while is this pattern. Um, from, uh, show you. It's called the Easy Bralette by Svetlana Volkova. Um, I don't know if you can see it. It's cropped, but I'm not making it cropped. And I started this back in, oh gosh, that was July. Um, I am using, I believe, 3.25 or 3. Point or three, I think I was using size three. I had to buy size three special needles. Um, and uh, and again, I've, got, I've ended up buying um, some bamboo ones. Um, <clears throat> so I'm about here. And then I, I actually increased the 3.25 now. Cause I, I, I think I'm going to, yeah, just cause I have plenty. Otherwise it'll be way too stretchy up here. So I just went up about a quarter millimeter. Um, again, this is one of those easy plain knits for the plain, not plain. Um, I am using the Holst Putty. Um, it is a coast and I talked about it because that's what I made this with. So this is a two, two by two rib. Um, and then I'm not sure what do I do when I get to the to the, the sleeves, but I'll figure it out. So because it is obviously a summer knit, I had put that one on hold too. And um, but I'm gonna take it with me <clears throat> when we go away. So I think that is all of my finished projects um, this summer and the last month or so with all my shawls. Huh, crazy, I know. So what have I bought? And I have purchased quite a bit of yarn. Um, I have obviously some projects in mind and, uh, and then again, some I don't have projects in mind. I just feel like buying things on sale so I'll start with I like I told you before I don't I have not used um, a lot of mohair with my makes, but I want to start doing that. And so again, I used the the, the aubergine with um, the little I tried the mohair from Knit Picks, um, which wasn't complete mohair but was very affordable. So then I thought I'd like to make maybe a. a, a love note or something with this because obviously I got lots of it still but I didn't want it to be the same as this that I'm knitting so I bought some mohair aloft from Knit Picks they had a sale um, you'll see so I think this will be an interesting mix it'll lighten this up and uh, this is way softer than the other one that I was using um, 
But again, this is a Nipix. It's pretty, it's a lace weight, and it's it's uh, not as itchy as the other one. Um, and it's affordable. And the reason it is not as itchy is that it's 72% super kid mohair and 28% silk. So I think these two together are going to be really nice. So I got nine or ten of these. Um, so that's... Yep, so I'll try that out. Um, two, four, six, eight of them. So we'll see what I end up making with it. I know I always end up going to the same patterns, but what I find as I've been knitting over the years and I've been getting older, um, I've made a lot of like circular uh, sweaters and I just find I can't wear anything really tight against my collar. So that's why I did so many V-necks and this is why I love this pattern so much. Um, and even the ranunculus because I use the, uh, I make it kind of baggy so it hangs. I know not a lot of people, not everybody likes that look, but I like it because it's nice and wide around the neck. Um, so it's my go-to, right? I the love note, um, that might be in, uh, I might be making a love note um, for my uh, granddaughter, actually. I saw Ray made one for her, his niece, who's about the same age. And I thought that's a really cute idea. And he made a little cropped one. Um, so I don't know, we'll see. Um, but she, she does not like any itching at all. So it'll have to be maybe with acrylic. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use any of the super soft because it does have just a little this one doesn't at all this one I've worn in the heat I've worn whatever but this coast yarn has no itch nothing at all um, nor the tide so the super soft is still like I have this black one <clears throat> um, I have not I've, I've washed it twice now but it still has a roughness but I did not wash it with dish soap and they did say to use dish soap. So I'm gonna try it again with dish soap and block it again and see if it softens up a bit. Um, Cause I did do the dish soap with the burgundy uh, Paris du jour and it came out really nice. Um, so of the Aloft, the other one I bought is this Royal Blue, which is just spectacular. That's pretty much the color. So again, it's kid mohair and silk um, from Nitpix. So that is really nice. Um, I'm not sure if I showed you what else I got from Nitpix, but I got all this gray yarn <laughs> and all this blue yarn. I don't know because you can't, probably can't see it through the bag. The gray you can, the blue you can't. I'll take it out. Um, my idea here was to make my one of my sons a cardigan or a sweater. So it's fingering. It's a really fine fingering. Um, it's a Huntington Valley Yarns from Knit Picks. It's 75% superwash and 25% nylon. So you can, you know, use it for socks um or whatever but i was thinking of you doing a um uh, a fingering uh sweater i have i bought i've already bought a few um max sear patterns that i think they would like and then i bought the blue the navy as well because um, it was just a really nice, it was a deal at the time, really affordable. Again, it's a 75-25, there's 218 yards, it's a 50 gram um, package, made in Peru, exclusively for Valley Yarns, and uh, again, I believe Superwash, and oh, where do we go, and nylon. So it's, it's a really nice navy. Um, I thought if I do it for me, I could mix these two and kind of give it a different kind of look. So I'll swatch and take a look. Um, or just 
like I said, do something for one of my sons. It kind of looks black there, so I'm trying to, it is needy. Anyway, so <clears throat> I bought 10 of those. I think I should have enough. And then I thought, oh, Nitpicks was having a, another sale and of course we need more yarn. So then I thought, well, maybe I've never tried this Stroll Tweed and it is fingering. So this is the, a gray again, with has these little Tweedy flecks in it. Um, it's fingering, it has 231 yards. It is 65% superwash, 25% nylon, and 10% Donegal Tweed. So I thought maybe my son would like sort of a, a cardigan in the Tweed. So I got five, six, seven, eight of those. So eight times 200, I should have enough, right? 1600 yards, I'm thinking. <clears throat> and then my one of my other sons loves the color green. So I thought I'd get this green in the same nitpicks. This green is called uh, Flagstone Heather, or Forest Heather. The other one was Flagstone Heather in the gray. This is called um, Forest Heather. Um, and it is a little brighter than I thought it was going to be. But um, actually, it's not so bad in this light. So I don't know. We'll see. Again, I bought eight of those. Um, anyway, the, the blue, sorry, the blue aloft is called Celestial. And the oat aloft, this it was called oat. This, it's called oat aloft. I found my ticket. So more purchase. So everything I, I kind of bought um, <clears throat> on sale. Do I need more yarn? Of course not, but that's part of the collection piece, right? And what else do I have in this box? I think that's it. Actually, I was very well behaved. Um, Holst Garn had a sale um, over Black Friday weekend, Cyber Monday, and I didn't buy any. I had about six or seven of these in the cart, different colors, and I said, nope, not gonna buy them. Just retired. I gotta watch my money now. <laughs> I know, I'm still gonna buy yarn, don't worry about that. No, 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 no is all bad. So the only other purchase that I have, um, and where are we at? Oh, we're at, oh, more than 16 minutes. I had to pause because no one was talking too loud. Um, is I bought a couple of patterns from The Knitting Man. I don't know if you've not watched The Knitting Man. Um, his name is Gary Ray Moore, uh, Gar Gary Ray Smith. He lives in England and he does some beautiful artwork, um, literally artwork with his, um, call it, it's not mosaic, it's, um, I can't remember now how, what, you, what we call it, it in, not intarsia, not mosaic, it's, I'll put the word down here because I can't, I'm losing my brain. Anyway, so I bought one of his patterns, which came with this poster, which he designed and painted, which is beautiful. Actually, I should get those framed for my granddaughter. And then this pattern for, um, oh, no. sorry, this is another picture he designed and painted. I guess the patterns are in the other two. Um, so I'm gonna get the other two out. Hopefully, yep. So there are two patterns. One, I believe. Oh, the other one I bought online, sorry. So this is Mrs. Smith's shawl. And he designed this. 
and the chart is just spectacular. Um, I did start it twice and I had to put it down because my brain just not, was not functioning um, for that. Um, but now that I am retired, hopefully, I will uh, um, have some brain space for this. I think I got another one. I can't remember. Or what, did I? Hmm. Anyway, I think I bought two. But this is the one I started. Yeah, I did get two. There's another one, but I'll have to show it next time. Um, this is called the Bluebird. It's a limited edition. And even just um, having this pattern like this, I've photocopied it and um, I'm, uh, you know, actually, no, this, I, the other one is downstairs. So this is not Mrs. Smith's shawl. This is just the Bluebird, which you can make into a blanket. Um, and then there's another one. So there, it's just beautiful. Um, he does some great work. He has a YouTube channel, although I have not seen him post in a couple of months. Um, but, um, really, really beautiful work. The, uh, the shawl that I have downstairs and, um, I'm going to go get it because I wanted, I do want to show it. Okay. Hold on. So I'm back. And yes, there's another chart. <coughs> So um, this chart, I'm, I don't have, I'm, I'm, this is Mrs. Smith's Chawl by Gary Ray Smith. And you actually do this with twice in the round and then you steak it on the one side. So I did um, start it. There are in one round, one round, uh, uh, 360 stitches in fingering weight. Um, and I am using uh, Holst, the aubergine, and the ink together. As you can see. So that'll really be nice. But it takes a lot of brain power, as you can imagine. I did find I have in my craft stuff um, this stand with this magnetic board Oop, that I used to do my cross stitching with. And this is all tangled up now. Yay. Okay. Where are we? Okay. Anyway. And so you put it on the table like that with the magnetic board, and then this sits so that you can follow the pattern. Not one you're gonna take with you anywhere, <laughs> as you can imagine. It is a lot of brain drain there, and um, I will, you know, I will try and attempt to do it. I spent meant a lot of money on these patterns. They're beautiful though. Even as artwork, they're gorgeous. But um, what did I do here? Oh my goodness. Okay, there we go. And it's still tangled. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna use aubergine and the ink. Um, and, and it'll be a quite nice shawl. And if you wanna see, go to Gary Ray Smith's Knitting Man podcast and you can actually see what he, um, how he, his process, what he does is just spectacular. And uh, you'll take a look at, at that. So that is my last six months. I think I feel like I've just gone through it really, really fast. Didn't give you a lot of details on the yarn or the needle sizes or any of that stuff. If you do want to know, then um, just post it down below and I will give you all the specs. I am not good at putting a Ravelry pages uh, on. Um, maybe that'll change now. Um, one thing I do want to do is take inventory of all my yarn and uh, maybe put, put post that on Ravelry. So there's lots of plans, 
things, a lot of hobbies. When they say that you retire, you're going to be bored. That's not me, <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, I, uh, I have lots to do and uh, now hopefully I have a lot more time to do it. So I'm going to call Nono so that he and I can, uh, we can have a dis discussion and let you know what we've been doing for the last six months. We'll try to keep it short. But um, if you're here just for the yarny knitting and uh, yarny goodness, thank you for coming by. I never thank everybody. Thanks for coming by. If you're uh, brand new to the channel, um, thanks for stopping by. I hope hopefully you'll subscribe. I do have um, some videos that you can take a look at where I do a little bit more um, a review on the whole scarn, a before and after blocking, and I talk more at length on the three different yarns that I've used. So take a look at those videos. Um, and um, for those that will be leaving, have a great Christmas um, or happy holidays. And I'm gonna call Nono now. So here we are. This is Nono Sal and my husband. And now we're gonna to be together all day, every day. What do you think of that? I love it. <laughs> yeah, right. I do. What's wrong? Why are you, you were here anyways. I mean... The, <laughs> That's true. I'm working not... at home mostly anyway. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. He's used to it. It's just the two of us. Just the two of us. That's, I love it. So the last time my podcast was May 31st. Wow. Yeah. So I kind of alluded to say that we were busy in the summer, visiting friends at their trailer and cottages. And, um, and also we, uh, we took a couple of trips. Oh, right. We have. Yes. <laughs> well, before we start that, yeah. um, I had a very, uh, momentous milestone birthday this year, but we're not going to say what number. And, uh, and so, um, Starts with a six. Stop. So mean. With a zero after it. So mean. Anyway. That's so good. You're not supposed to tell people. Oh, well, well. Anyway. So, um, in August, you want to tell them what you did? Oh, just on the 27th. Was it 26th or 27th? So, my birthday's October 2nd. So, 2nd, right? So, oh. but we had a few trips planned. So, so I had a surprise birthday party for her on Friday. August 26th. 26th. Yep. Uh, um, a nice uh, venue here in uh, Stony Creek called Galileo's Gardens. And we had uh, about 70 people there. 70 people. 70 people. <laughs> and uh, it was beautiful. It was Imagine. catered. Had a nice, beautiful buffet uh, bar. Uh, a DJ, a photo booth. Um, and we had friends I'll come. I'll put some pictures at the end. We're just so pretty well all friends uh, and some family, mostly friends, who came, you know, some came all the way from uh, the U.S., right, uh, to uh, to visit and surprise her, so. And I was surprised. Yeah. I, I suspected, I thought we were going to go out for dinner for my birthday, um, even though it was six right. weeks before my right. birthday. Um but I don't know, there was a few hints that I thought maybe there was gonna be about like 10 of us at a dinner. And then I walked into this hall that our friends pretended it was gonna be a wine and beer tasting. Right. Um, <clears throat> I walk in and it was all decorated in purple and white. It was beautiful and I couldn't believe the number of people. So it was very nice. Yeah, no, it was Did nice. a good job. Thank you, honey. No, totally surprised. Totally, yeah. totally deserved. So that was, uh, and I wore my, uh, linen cotton ranunculus today. I, did. I did. did. So yeah. I'll, I'll post some pictures uh, of the party. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so really good. And one of the reasons why he did it in August was we were going away the month of September for two weeks, almost three weeks. Almost three weeks. Yeah. yeah. So we went on a European cruise and um, we, uh, so we have this plan. So all these things kind of, we weren't actually sure with COVID and everything else, whether we're gonna, it was gonna happen, but um, there were uh, 22 people uh, in the group. We didn't know all of them, but um, 22 people that our travel agent put together. So it was a lot of fun. It was a celebrity cruise and it left, we went to Venice, flew to Venice. We stayed there- A couple of nights. Two nights, some of Sal's, uh, uh, cousins came to visit us 
and mm -hmm. uh, had some drinks and stuff. And we, uh, we got an Airbnb in Venice and then we went down to Ravenna to get the cruise line um, because they don't leave out of Venice anymore because it causes lots of problems with Venice and the water and all that stuff. And so we went from Venice, you wanna Yeah, tell to them split, where? split Croatia, beautiful. Then we were supposed to go to Cator Montenegro, but it was a very, very windy day that day. Um, and there was no dock, so what you're tendered in. Uh, so the tendered boats were canceled. Plus we were doing a, uh, what kind of, cave tour or something? Water yeah, it boat. was a water tour. It was a but, boat tour. And, yeah, and they to the, and, and, and the they, blue caves right, or blue caves. <clears throat> and that was, they canceled that automatically too. So, so we never actually got to Kator. It looked beautiful. Well, we have some, some nice really pictures. nice pictures yeah. that I'll post, yeah. So we left Kator, then we went down to, uh, Taranto Puglia in Italy. Then we went around the boot to Naples. Uh, then we went up to uh, Civita, Civita Vecchia, Rome. which is uh, uh, where you people go. To, you can go to Rome and and, and 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 those places there. From there, it's a little town. We right. didn't go to Rome. We've been there, so we just kind of walked the town, had lunch there. It was really nice. Nice little. Was town. it worth to, to no. like an hour? and a half to get to Rome yeah, for yeah, three hours. When yeah. We've been there three, four days, yeah, but so, when we go to yeah. Rome, we'll stay longer. <laughs> so then from there, we went to La Spezia, and that is a nice little town again, and where you can go to Florence and Pisa. We went to Cinque Terre, uh, which is a, a magnificent, uh, yeah. you know, five towns that are built in the mountains and uh, all colorful, you know, houses. There were fishermen in the homes, whatever, but... Yep. just beautiful and then from there we actually went to france to Lyon, france uh from france we went to my palma mallorca which we had been so we really didn't get off the boat we kind of just stayed on the ship when we already been to mallorca and then uh, we ended uh, the cruise in barcelona and uh, we stayed there for another two three days, days three days three nights yeah three nights um, our friends yeah. and then uh left from there so that was very nice yeah right and then we came home and we were home for a month because i surprised my young bride young. with with a with a trip to jamaica for her birthday Woo! so Which we, we hadn't been in yeah three years, three years. so yeah. um so we went there from the, the 28th of october came back the 4th and now we're home we were home for a month and now we're today we're leaving for florida to our first leg to go to our bvi uh catamaran cruise so so it's been it's been a whirlwind but um exciting so now you know i had to retire because i ran out of vacation credits <laughs> so uh, <laughs> it was like True. you know what i can't keep going back i just got to keep going on vacation and then yeah. we've got some plan for the spring but we'll talk about yeah. later yeah. um yeah so we're flying down to florida actually in, in, an, in a couple of hours mm -hmm. uh to meet with our friends and then we're going to we've um chartered a catamaran cruise out of tortola with four with the four couples and we'll be on the catamaran for four uh, so eight nights eight nights um back to florida for a couple of days and then back here for christmas so yeah so i'll take some pictures and uh i'll post some of those um yeah, we are kind of thinking of maybe doing a travel blog on a different channel, starting a new channel with our travels and our retirement. But I don't know if you'd like to see Nono and I doing a different uh, yeah, retirement think, blog. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. think we have time today for this trip, but I mean, for the ones we got yeah. coming up, I think we could maybe do something. Do, yeah, so if do. you're interested, if you think that's worth watching, uh, yeah. put a comment down below. Um, yes, I like, yeah, I like down below, do that and then YouTube, I don't yeah. know where the subscriber, yeah, press whatever. like, yeah, 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 press like, whatever. Yeah. So we have to pack and go. <laughs> so I thought I'd get this video in, and um, I'll have to upload it in Florida, where my friends live, um, before we leave for Tortola. And uh, hopefully everybody's doing great. Um, I'm not sure you'll see us before Christmas, but. Uh, you might and if not then have a great holiday um and we'll see you in the new year and we'll talk uh, and at that time i'll talk about what my new year resolution is and what i'll want to make and um 
I am bringing knitting down for the plane, but I don't know how much knitting I'll do on the catamaran. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Um, Bye, say, everybody. Say goodbye, no, no. Bye, no, no. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye. -bye.